How you doing people? Random here. So, I have a couple locks that I got from Ted Park. Um, these are both safety deposit lo locks. This one has keys, this one does not. I'm not going to pick them because I've yet to uh, get around picking the Lieber locks besides the pancake locks, but we are going to take them apart and see how they work inside because I have yet to find out how, they're, uh, how they function. We're going to start with this one because we have the key and I'll give you a little uh, demo of what I know. So this would be the key which would be handed out uh, which would be the bank manager or the clerk who is in charge of the safety deposit boxes would have in their possession. So you'd come in, you'd be like, oh, I want to, you know, check on my collection of marbles. Mm -hmm. So you, they put this key in. Make sure that's good. And then you only get it once, but I noticed this one you had to click once or twice. Then there you go. Now the safety deposit box would open. And then you pull it back, you take your key out, and it would automatically lock it. It would be basically ready to lock again. I'm guessing you couldn't take your key out until um, it was already closed. But let's pull it apart. And it came with this cool little thing. Oh, by the way, this one is a... What's the name on this? Uh, L.L. Bates Company in from Boston. Home of the Celtics and the Bruins. So... This little card says, the manufacturer's National Bank of Troy. And from Troy, New York, um, please keep one safety deposit box key in the envelope. Loss of keys will cause you considerable expense. Both keys must be returned to us when the box is surrendered. And from box 781, uh, what's that, Marine Midland Bank. So, how does it work? It's got some crazy little dimples here. I'm sure that means something. Uh, they're they could be casting um, ports from when this was casted vent holes because it's uh, it is brass and by the looks like yellow brass but I don't know it's I'm guessing it's a different color than uh, the basically the the wafers or the arms and there's a technical name for that but I can't think of it at the moment let's see how she works let's try to organize these parts because I don't want to Okay, so there is our lever right here that hits our arm. Now, I'm going to put this one in to see if I can actually get it to stay in. Okay. Whoop, oh, wasn't in. A, whoop, ah, ha, ha, ha. You know what? Let's get that back together before lose something. Can we take that out? Yes, we can. Oh, that one slides. Okay. So this one slides forward. So it must be one of the uh, one of the wafers that are designed for the master key. Okay, so they stay in place. So let's let's just pull these wafers out. Then we'll probably get a better idea. Let's put the spring tension on there. They should just come right out. I guess I'll probably have looks like six wafers in here. Not wafers, but levers. Six levers in here. And there's another one with the with a notch in it. So I'm guessing there's probably three of them. Two. Nope, there's only two. And then the bottom one is a basically a slave notch. So it's for the slave key. It's got a little bit of bendy bend in it. And it also, these ones have a different I'll show you the difference on these actually. That's one of the ones from the slave key, so the operator key, and this one is from the master key. So I'm guessing this little bend in here is what actually allows that to slide forward. So that is almost like a double spring in one. One spring keeps the tension to keep it down, and when it's lifted up to the right position, it slides in 
and locks into that's not coming out, that's right, it locks into that locking ball right there and that holds those two in and once those two are in position you stick your other key in here which is the operator key and you'd slide it up and it would hit and then this would slide back so very, very cool, very simple design, very ancient design. Um, I have to say, thank you very much, Ted, for sending me this. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. I'd like to get that out just because I'm nosy. Oh, yeah, it did come out. Okay, so that's not forged in there. That's actually cast in there later on. And I hate to say that that looks like two types, two types of brass. One looks like red brass and one looks like yellow, so which they're virtually the same, just a little... one has more copper in it. Now if I can figure out how to get this back in... There we go. But it is a very, 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 very heavy lock, and I'm sure it is pickable. There is part of our, our can here. Now, I'm going to take a wild guess that you would have to rotate this to this position, and you have to realize at the same time, this is on top. So there's, and you wouldn't be able to see any of this when it was mounted. You'd have to rid that that position. Have a tool that would hold the tensions just slightly on this to hold it back, and then get yourself something like a flag, a long flag, um, in there, and then be able to turn it. So I think you're. Uh, it all depends on what the lowest cut is, which is probably this one right here. And let's see how much you would need. Getting them back together is quite the... There we are. Let's put, leave that out and put that to the bottom. Try not to bend the spring too much. Okay. So that's all the way at the bottom. This is in here. You would need a flag. You would need a flag from this point to that point, so that measurement right there is how long. This is a pretty big flag when you think about it. You would almost have to stick your flag in first, and then stick your tensioner on there after. But maybe we'll actually take some time and um, build something that can pick this lock. Now that I've had it apart, I know what's inside. And if I do get around to it, I will post an update video. So let's keep those in position. We'll move off the side. And you know what? we still got lots of time, so we're going to take apart the other one. And it's a dual key. I bet you it works roughly in the same manner keys they can go over here too. Okay, let's see what we got in here. So one of these has to be the operator and one of them has to be the, the master of the bank. Get off slowly, I don't want flying. Okay. Let's see we can count the wafers now and tell you that the bank's key has two fairly thick wafers and the operator key has one, two, three, four, five. So five uh, levers. So this one would slide up into that position and I believe on this one it doesn't have that quick latch on it. Move in a little more. And this one does not have a, a quick latch on it like the other one does. So you would actually have to rotate that key hold it in that position with one hand. Oops, we lost a spring. Uh, not a big deal. So you'd have to hold it in that position with your key. And then you would have to rotate this with the key in position and then it would finally slide all the way back. But pretty much the same design. Uh, picking this one. Now both those levers are the exactly same length as far as I can tell so you wouldn't be too hard to pick the one side
yeah, you could do it just like that. You just wouldn't know where you were is the problem. You'd almost have, I'd probably start by picking this side first, but then that's right on the edge too. So it, mm, yeah, you'd have to almost take a wild guess where it is. So either way, I'm probably not going to build picks for this one. But either way, thank you very much for uh, for watching my stuff. Thank you very much, Ted, for sending me these. Um, much appreciated. I've never had a chance to pull apart any bank stuff, and it's kind of a good thing. Um, I like to stay away from uh, uh, knowledge of that sort. <laughs> but you never know where it could be dangerous. Either way, take care and uh, support your local locksmith.